Hello everyone, welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to be making a pretty much a modular wall piece uh, that can be used and rearranged to create like a larger uh, structure, uh, like a larger wall or walls. So I'm starting out by just using ZBrush and usually I don't start in ZBrush. I always kind of like start doing models in the Maya and then import those into ZBrush. Uh, but in this case, I thought it was a good opportunity to just uh, open up ZBrush and make it uh, from scratch here. And so what I did was I opened up the uh, default cube project uh, for the lightbox here in ZBrush. And then I started using that and duplicating a few cubes to create the, uh, uh, the main wall that I'm going to kind of reuse later on to create a larger structure. And so I'm using those cubes and... Here I'm using the Trim Smooth Border brush to add a few more details. So it's going to be mostly a... The brushes I'm going to be using mostly for this are the uh, Trim Brush, the Trim Smooth Border, uh, the Mullet Fast, and I'm going to be using one of the Orb brushes, the one that has kind of like the rock details. I added that and then I'm using the Mullet Fast just to add a few more details to the, uh, to the stones or bricks, whatever you want to call them. And so... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing here in ZBrush, is just adding more details to those. It's going to add in some variation in the shape, just so that the uh, the surface of the of the bricks is not fully flat. Uh, you, you usually on flat surfaces, you want to have some kind of detail. That's why I'm using the uh, mostly the Mullet Fast 2 brush and the Trim uh, Dynamic brush as well. You notice that I'm working with the uh, the default subdivision for those cubes uh, when I open the original project. I'm not even uh, dividing that. I'm just using that default uh, sub D level for these. And then later on, you can always subdivide them as well, just to add more geo or more more resolution to to the actual models here. So I'm adding a lot of just variation to the surface. It's trying to get some interesting shapes out of these. Because you don't want the blocks like these to just be like flat and without any detail or just like super geometric. They're still geometric, but, uh, but you still want to add a little bit of variation to it. And like I said, I'm not even adding more geometry to these. Uh, so here what I'm doing is I'm just scaling some of these so that it's not a flat wall. So it's always a good idea to change the silhouette of the model, even if it's something that you're going to be reusing, like this is going to be a modular piece. And if, even if you reuse it, I think it's still a good idea to, to change the silhouette a little bit. So you want some of the blocks to come out, some of them to go in a little bit, just to add some variation to it. And I'm using the same techniques for everything, pretty much, for all the all the blocks. Uh, like I said, I'm using the same three different brushes. And here I'm just going to use the clay one just to add a few, just add a little bit more to the edges as well. And then finally, once I'm done, I'm going to merge all of this, all of the uh, models. So I'm going to use the merge all and just open that all, that sub tool, and then export that as my high poly. And then for the low poly, I'm going to dynamesh the whole thing. So I'm going to duplicate it just to have a reference. And I'm going to dynamesh it to a low, pretty much to a low uh, resolution, so that. The pieces uh, are kind of merged together and then I use the decimation master and then just decimate it. So in the first one here there's like a gap in between one of the bricks so I just redid the Dynamesh because so I don't want to have gaps because when you have uh, gaps between models um, and you decimate it you get more like nasty geometry that you have to clean up later so it's better to to have it like a clothes model like a water type model. So I brought it back into Maya, obviously, and uh, the reason for that is because I want to clean up the geo a little bit. 
So every time you decimate something in ZBrush, you always get some like bad geometry or like extra edges or geo that you don't really need for your low poly model. And that's why I just kind of always, every time I do that in ZBrush, when I use that workflow, I always come back to Maya and just clean it up a little bit. You don't necessarily have to retopologize it, uh, unless it's meant to be like an animated model, like an organic model that needs animations or something like that. Uh, if it's like a hard surface like this, uh, you can just use that dynamished model. Uh, but you do want to, like I said, you do want to clean up the geo. So that's just a little bit cleaner. I always check for angles as well, just to double check. And then I just do the UVs for this. Uh, really basic UVs. I'm just going to cut some of the edges out so that those are separate from the frontal uh, part of the uh, blocks. And obviously, like you noticed, I cut the, uh, the entire thing in half, uh, basically because I was working symmetrically in ZBrush. So it was a symmetrical model anyway. And then like here, I just unfold those pieces and uh, it looks pretty good to me. I just I think it could be packed a little bit better. So I just moved some of these a little bit. And then I always offset my UVs. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I'm doing that. Uh, the reason I do that is because sometimes in Substance Painter, when you have overlapping UVs, the maps don't don't bake for some reason. It doesn't always happen, but uh, because sometimes it does happen, I just do it as just an in case, just in case situation here. And then here in Substance Painter, I just baked all the maps. I used uh, the default settings, but I increased the uh, the resolution, obviously. And then I'll use my stylized material that I made. Uh, if you're interested in learning how to make that one, there's a link in the description. Um, but I always use that for stylized models. Obviously, I do change the colors and some of the settings uh, because I like the material is really useful, but it's not always like a just drag and drop and you're done, you always have to change a few things uh, depending on your model. Uh, especially I always kind of change the ambient occlusion, uh, which for stylized models it's fine if you have a little bit of ambient occlusion. Uh, if you're going for full uh, physically based rendering, obviously you want to remove the ambient occlusion and make sure you don't have any like baked lighting. Uh, so I'm also adding a little bit more variation to the roughness as well. Just so that it's not a flat um, roughness on the uh, on the surface of the model. That's actually something I want to update to the uh, stylized material, because uh, currently it's uh, just sort of like a flat uh, rough value. So yeah, here I'm just using the stylized material that I made, and uh, you know, just adding a few more colors. I think it's always good to add color variation to your model. And here's pretty much the end result. As you can see, I took some of those pieces and made it into a larger structure. It's not really a large structure, but I reused the pieces a little bit just to make something something larger. So anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. And uh, if you liked it, uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next time. Do you see this environment right here? I made this really quickly using Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and Substance Designer and Unreal Engine. You too can make something like this really easily and in a short period of time. To make an environment like this one, all you have to do is make a few simple props, put them together in Unreal, and then simply add some lights and you're pretty much done. So hey, this is only a 45 second ad so there's not enough time for me to cover everything. So click on the link below now and I will show you exactly how I made this environment. The best thing about learning how to make an environment like this one is that you can simply use the same techniques to pretty much make any other type of environment. Oh and by the way, you don't need to be an expert already in order to learn how to make something like this. You can follow along without any prior knowledge. I will be showing you the basics on how to use Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, Substance Designer and Unreal Engine, so you can follow along without any issue. Like I said, this is a very short video so I don't have enough time to explain everything. So click on that link below and I will show you exactly how this is done. And by the way, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this for, so click on that link now so you don't miss out.